Welcome back. Police confiscated over $100,000 in dangerous drugs and arrested two males for alleged possession in the Grand Bahama. On Wednesday, two males ages 51 and 47 years old were taken into custody. Preliminary reports indicate that sometime around 12 noon, officers attached to the Central Intelligence Bureau and the Drug Enforcement Unit acting on intelligence made checks of a dirt road off Silver Point Drive where they observed two males in a silver Nissan Murano Jeep near the canal. The vehicle and the occupants were intercepted and searched along with the surrounding area where two bags containing a quantity of suspected marijuana were discovered. The drugs weighed in at about 100 pounds. Meantime, here in the capital, a 21-year-old male of Worsley Road off Carmichael Road was arrested for possession of suspected marijuana and ammunition on Thursday. Preliminary reports indicate that sometime around 12.05 a.m., officers attached to Operation Secure City, while on saturation patrol in the area of Sunshine Park, intercepted the driver of a silver Nissan Skyline. Officers conducted a search of the vehicle and discovered the items. The estimated weight and street value of the drugs unknown at this time. Investigations into that matter continues. The library in the female medium security cell block at the Bahamas Department of Correctional Services being replenished with a number of books donated by the wife of Governor General Lady Clara Smith, who on Tuesday morning visited the facility. The library is the first of its kind since opening in July of 2022. Lady Clara says she hopes the library helps inmates gain skills necessary to make a positive contribution to society upon their release. Very proud. It would keep them busy reading, more experience, and keep them happy. Uh, one night about midnight, I just woke up and it came to me to open a library for the lady prisoners. I kept pursuing and pursuing and finally it happened. I want those to learn patience. I want those to know that there's a whale out there that is different from being in here. And most of all, my wish came true that the mothers that have a babies can come up and see them. The female residents at BDOX have weekly scheduled one hour use of the library and its computers with over 300 books to choose from. Inmates Ernesta Butler and Katrina Gilbert share how the library and books have impacted their time while behind bars. I mean, it's a blessing, it expands my vocabulary, we can look up different things on the internet, keep my mind off of my surroundings like really off, the, off my surroundings and block out all negativity. Keeps me calm. Well, first of all, the spiritual books help put you on another level with God. So it helps you to get a peace of mind while you're away from your family. And then the fiction books, they help you to just take your mind out of here. And we also are allowed to go online. So we could get to go on the websites and see what's going on. So when we get out of here, we don't feel as exiled as we were. So it's a big leap and we really appreciate it. Beginning in a few weeks, residents at BDOX will be able to spend the entire day with their children. Leader of the Coalition of Independence, Lincoln Bain, professes that sending 150 Bahamian personnel to assist with the peacekeeping efforts in Haiti will be fruitless. His comments came while speaking to the media outside the Governor General's office as the party filed for a commission of inquiry concerning the Davis administration's handling of the immigration crisis. Mr. Bain explains his perspective on the issue. I have personal experience in Haiti. Uh, I started going to Haiti to volunteer after the earthquake. Um, I was the first Bahamian uh, to land in Haiti, uh, 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 chartering a plane and sending uh, 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 aid there. And I spent a lot of time living in Haiti. Now, based on my knowledge of Haiti, sending 150 troops will do nothing for Haiti. Uh, the UN and all of their military forces have not been able to do anything for Haiti. Haiti has a particular culture that has to be dealt with internally. The gang war going on is an election culture that they have. Gangs control neighborhoods. After the neighborhoods are controlled, everyone in the neighborhood is supposed to vote for whatever gang is in control. 
and, and this is happening because an election is imminent. This is the culture of Haiti, and this happens every time. It has never been this vast, but it's never been this serious before, and it's never uh, gotten so hard. But now the gangs are more powerful than they were in previous years, and that's why this is, this is happening. He goes on to suggest that the role the Bahamas should contribute to the issue in Haiti is that of diplomacy, ensuring that proper elections are able to be held. Otherwise, the Bahamas should not interfere. We should secure our borders to make sure that those persons are not able to flood into the Bahamas. Why is this a problem? I am a person with police experience. And I am telling you that this is not just a humanitarian situation. This is an organized crime situation. There is smuggling of people, drugs, and guns going on right now using this situation as an excuse. And these criminal gangs are now in the Bahamas getting emboldened. They are in Abaco buying properties. They are setting themselves up in the Bahamas and they are even overtaking our local Bahamian gangs. And so this is a serious problem that is beyond the humanitarian side that they're trying to make you focus on. And so if these dangerous people are allowed to come into our country, which they are, how are we going to defend ourselves? Bain says sending Bahamian personnel to Haiti is out of order. He says that manpower resource or that manpower resource should be used here in the Bahamas to secure our own borders. Senator Michael Halkidis, Minister of Economic Affairs, together with proud Bahamians, recognize and extend congratulations to the Bahamas' National Computer Incident Response Team, or CERT Manager, Symmetria McKinney, on receiving the President's Award for the Public Service at the Information System Security Association, ISSA, International Awards Gala, held in Las Vegas, Nevada, on Saturday past. ISSA's President's Award for Public Service recognizes an individual's contributions to the information security profession in the area of public service. Ms. McKinney, who is recognized internationally as a foremost cybersecurity expert, has done a mammoth job of leading the establishment of the Bahamas' National Computer Incident Response Team, which will be officially launched later this year. Ms. McKinney's nomination and success in snagging one of this year's seven top awards at the event is a testament to her commitment to education, service, and her profession as a cybersecurity expert. And finally, the Bahamas national men's basketball team that is set to compete at the FIBA pre-Olympic qualifiers in Argentina, August 14th to the 20th, is perhaps the best team the Bahamas has ever put together with three current NBA players, including Kai Jones of the Charlotte Hornets, Shavano Buddy Heel of the Indiana Pacers, and DeAndre Aiden of the Phoenix Suns. Eric Gordon Jr. of the Phoenix Suns was also expected to be on the roster, having played in a recent scrimmage game versus the NCAA Kansas Jayhawks, but officials in the Bahamas Basketball Federation said there are still some administrative details needed to be worked out with USA Basketball before Eric Gordon Jr. can be added to Team Bahamas, hopefully sometime in the near future. Prime Minister Philip Davis sent a personal social media message to the team and the nation saying that Team Bahamas is a testament to the Bahamas' grit and talent with possibly as many as four NBA professionals. The Prime Minister wanted the players and coaches to know that every Bahamian everywhere is cheering and believing in them and standing by their sides. The tournament will determine which teams advance to the final round of the Olympic qualifiers for a spot in the 2024 Paris Olympic Games set for July 26 to August 11th. Once again, the team will be competing against Argentina, Chile, Colombia, Panama, Uruguay and the U.S. Virgin Islands. That'll do it for your JCN Evening News. Once again, I'm Jerino Saunders. Thanks so much for joining us. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.